Hi there guys, good evening to you. How are you doing? I did say I was going to come on on uh, my other social media channels at um, 5.45 but then I tried to bring the router a little bit closer to here so we didn't get so many interruptions and um, and uh, I plugged it in wrong so it wouldn't work so I was late. Anyway, I need to establish whether anyone can uh, comment because otherwise I'm going to restart the video and find out. Hey, we're commenting. That's good. So we've got comments. Brilliant stuff. I need my glasses on. So first things first, I've got a few things to say. But I'm just going to let a few people come in. So Happy New Year to you guys. And um, this is going to be an interesting video, I think. A few things have uh, happened recently and uh, I want to talk about them. I've got a nice little fire going. I'm outside and um, got plenty of light on the subject, so we should be able to learn a few things. And um, uh, firstly, right, what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to watch this video on playback. And what that means is as much as, oh, <laughs> yeah, I am late, John. As much as we'll make a video, we'll try and make it watchable for everybody else afterwards as well. Now, I do actually have uh, something to celebrate and something to apologise for. So this is my YouTube channel, and I've been running this channel for quite a long time, and I never really have a plan as to when I'm going to post. And the reason for that is because you try and make sure that your videos are good. And on social media, you can put pictures as well as videos. And uh, so therefore, I'm not um, here as often as I'd like to be. So I have to make a short apology. Right? <laughs> Secondly, over the time that I've been running my videos on here, um, slowly the subscriptions have been building up. And on Christmas Eve, or was it? No, it was New Year's Eve. I reached 50,000 subscribers, so there's a bit of a celebration on board. So, um, congratulations to me, and thanks to all of you for um, subscribing. And I'd just like to say a huge thank you. It means a hell of a lot. So, cheers. Now, I have, um, I have some other things to celebrate as well. So, one of the other things I've got to celebrate is that I've got a new piece of land where I'm um, lucky enough to be able to operate some courses from. And I went for a wander around there earlier and it's an absolutely sublime piece of land. It's almost, it's, it's unusual. Firstly, it's a piece of Breckland and it has wild animals running around everywhere. So I got to see some nice deer this afternoon. Um, pheasants and squirrels dancing about but it's almost among the trees it's moon-esque meaning it's all really quite undulated and along with all of the old rotten big old trees that have been laying there for hundreds of years decaying um, all of the moss was moving in and it's just actually quite an exciting piece of land so I've taken a video of that um, of my walk around there earlier I didn't manage to capture the deer because they were already on the move from a distance. It made too much noise. Um, but one of the things about that particular piece of land, right, which brings us on to our subject for this video, is it's an old gravel quarry. I believe it was hand dug um, probably over a hundred years ago. So it's had loads of time to recuperate. And I managed to get a bit of flint. Now it's a good job that I went for that walk because prior to doing that walk I'd already planned to do this video and I had a piece of flint on board, a, a piece of flint here. You're welcome to ask me questions as well. All right, I know I look a bit weird with the old reflection in my, light, in my eyes and everything but this was the particular piece of flint that I was going to nap right, on this video. And all said and done, that doesn't look 
like a too bad a piece of flint. And uh, yeah, new flint supply is an interesting term of phrase. Where do you find good flint? I'll tell you something, when I find that out, I'll let you know. <laughs> we'll talk about that if you like. I'm actually creating a committee at the moment which is about raising flint. But I've got to do a lot of work to actually make that happen. I've got to write to quite a few different important people and get them to write supporting letters and recognise that from many different aspects we still need flint and it should be raised out of the ground. But to get it, you've got to get a hole in the ground. So you could go to the coast, right? Um, no, I don't suppose you can get decent flint in Austria, John. You could go to the coast, where you're going to get coastal erosion. You can go to the right rivers, but if you haven't had a chalk system and an ancient coral reef system going on, then um, basically you're not going to have flint. So right in the middle of Europe is about the least likely place you're going to find it. <coughs> I live sort of fairly um, well inland in Britain, but um, it's had a Cretaceous seabed with like uh, millions of years of coral reef systems. But anyway, I'm quite excited to show you this particular piece of flint. Uh, now are you ready for this? So this has actually got a patina on it, right? And you can notice here that these marks here, right, are marks they wouldn't, wouldn't have been on the surface when this originally broke. Now I'm going to describe this as a piece of floor stone. And the first reason being is because it's got something called cortex, which is a big thick skin around it. And um, as you can imagine, I mean, you see in the quality of the material right in there, right? And this would have gone that way, this in every direction where the cortex isn't, for some distance. So this was a big piece of stone. And there's a, there is a something called a thermal here, you see this crack? That's going to be something interesting to touch. No, there's no antler pick marks on this. Basically what's happened, right, so We'll just enjoy it. We'll just enjoy this whole subject for a minute. And um, I'm enjoying talking to you as well. So basically, uh, uh, it's interesting. When you when I'm running films and I'm talking, I like to be able to talk to you from a face. So we will drop the camera down to this in a minute or two, um, a bit more. But just for a second or two, we'll hang about with me talking to you guys, and then we'll get on to the subject. So. The flint itself would have started off its journey at the bottom of the sea um, maybe a hundred million years ago and it would have been a coral reef system that would have lasted for a long long time. Then something would have happened and, um, and uh, I hear you Samantha, there's some good flint nappers in England, not that many, Carl Lee, yeah, he's been on the circuit for a long time. Um, uh, but we all do our di we all do it slightly differently. We've got different ways of portraying our skill. So tonight we're doing the wheel system, if you don't mind. Um, where was I? So basically, something would have pulled the sea back, and when the sea went back, the coral reef system would have died, and it would have been a flat seabed. And that situation may have laid there for quite some time and eventually the sea comes back in and then you get all of the little, all of the little um, critters, you know, all the bivalves and all of the types of mussels. And basically their shells turn down to chalk, but an element of it is silicate. But basically for many, many millions of years again, nothing else happens. You've just got chalk slowly sedimenting down on top of what would have once been the piece of flint. And I, you know, we will move on and get excited in a minute, right? But um, essentially, that's now trapped in the bottom of the sea for a long, long time. And the reason I'm telling you all this is because somebody asked if there are antler pick marks. 
know what eventually happened, right? And we don't know which particular ice age did it, but it would have pushed the chalk seabed out and rolled it into gravels. And this flint would have actually met one or more ice ages, rolling and tumbling, and eventually ended up in a gravel system. So all of the breaks that are on it, the cracks that are in it, and the scratches on the surface are associated to um, the actual, they're associated to the actual activity that this has met through uh, ice ages. So a few more things, right? We're just gonna do a recap. So firstly, Happy New Year, because not all of you were here when we started. Secondly, this is a celebration live, in, live video because I've reached 50,000 subscribers and I want to thank all of you guys for being subscribers. And um, thirdly, this is an amazing piece of flint, which we go down to, that has come from the new land that I'm going to be running my workshops from. And the first job that I've got to do on that piece of land is to build a roundhouse. And I've got this vision on it. And I've built roundhouses before, but I've got a particular vision with this one. And I'm going to be filming as much as that as I can. And um, so there we go. We have a starting point. So, quick drink. And we'll pop that down for a second, because what I need to do is I need to get a leg pad strapped on, which I happen to be sitting on. And just to add in, do all what, flint up as what? I didn't see that, That's, that uh, comment's gone now. You can rewrite that if you want. Um, you have to remember, your little tiny, if you think like that, that's what the comments come up like. <laughs> So it's quite hard for me to read them, that's why I've got my glasses on and I've got the camera nice and close. In a minute, what's gonna happen is I'm not gonna be able to read the comments because um, I'm gonna be turning the camera down and I'm gonna be focusing, but I'll still be talking along the journey of everything while I'm doing it. So just to my side here, I've got some hammer stones. These are quartzite boulders, which are a lot older than the flint itself. Basically, it's quite interesting because you could ask yourself, well, what's a quartzite? What is quartzite? It was the stuff that was formed when the planet was formed, you know, the Big Bang territory. Super heat, super welding, you know, that's a welded rock, right? And that's super ancient. And then what I've got is I've got a nice deer antler coronet. And I don't actually know what's going to happen when we get into the flint because I've never been in there before. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not going to fall in 2,000 pieces on the first hit. I think it's going to be good. and I think it could be quite exciting. So to try and make it exciting, I'm going to get the camera pointing at it. <laughs> there was no big bang. I don't really care whether there's a big bang or not, <laughs> if I'm honest with you. <laughs> But however it was, right, we've got some ancient rocks and that's not the subject. Right, happy new year. We're gonna break open this flint. So I'm gonna try and get the camera on a spot on point, but just for a couple of seconds longer, right, I wanna read comments and, um, and I've got 67 of you on here at the moment and um, I do feel a bit like a foreigner on my own channel because I don't come on here very often, right? And chat to you guys. I chat to people a lot more on Instagram and uh, and on Facebook because they're the places that I'm operating in, in a, uh, you know, far more commonly. And um, so it'd be nice to get to know some of you as well. But I just don't suppose it's all going to happen tonight. But here we go. Let's enter a rock. Let's, you know, feel a vibration. Because all said and done, right? Flint's just not flint. Flint, I've got heaps of flint. And honestly, if I sat there with them, I've got another bit right here. 
Let me just show you this, for example. This was my second option today, because I didn't know what the first option would come out like. Now you can see, that looks like quite good fun, and there's areas on it, right, that look better than others. And that would have been an entertaining thing to get into, right, and try and make a dagger from. And one of the big things I would have had to do is take off all of the big, like, rugged, um, try and show you, like stuff that looks like cement. Not fun to nap your way through, right? But this one, right, um, well, I wouldn't actually call it chert. Chert's, um, see, there's a question, chert versus flint. A, they come from the same era, they come from the same arena, but chert shows much more within its structure of what we would describe as um, uh, as uh, the internal structure of um, the coral itself. So you get patinations in chert, and you know it's a little bit more um, textured, whereas flint is a little bit more sweet and honey-like. But quite often within flint you just get really low grade silica and then sometimes if you're in exactly the right place you get really good stuff and I reckon we've got a bit of really good stuff so without further ado yeah chert often requires a little bit of heat treatment right whereas flint we'll drop that camera down to there and I can reckon that we can still see uh, just turn it on the angle a bit I bring this up and I'm going to do what I think is the most sensible thing to do, right? Which is a very soft, gentle tap on here. Can you hear that changing as I'm tapping it? Okay. So let's have a look at what's just happened, right? You see how that's wet there? So that was already broke, right? And I've just tapped that and separated that, but that crack is still running. So what we're now going to do, right, is we're going to tap that again. There we go. Okay. So we have that piece off there now. So this is what we could describe as thermal damage. But let's just um, bring that camera up a little bit again. You might say to yourself, oh my god, the flint's done for, right? It's not done for, this is brilliant, right? I don't know what I'm making yet, Otter. I'm waiting to see what's available within the stone. It'd be nice if I can make something that could potentially contribute to being a dagger blade or something like that. But if we look here, trying to get that so I can see, right here, there's a little dot. Can you see that dot? Well, that's the spine of a sea anemone. And it's travelling through there, and it would have been hollow, so it filled up with water. And then when the Ice Age came, right, the water expanded and it cracked the rock, and the crack has been sitting there ever since. Yeah, so we're just working with what's here. Now if we look right, hang on, I'll bring you back. So the crack is still running that way, and we've got a few things that are happening out on this side. Them other bits, they can either potentially, possibly, end up being... There we go. Okay, so we're in business, right? We're now starting to see what we're up against. Wouldn't you agree? So that piece here, right, is one that I'm going to put to one side, and this is our main bulk now. I'm just going to come back up to camera again, because, um, and I'm going to chuck a couple more logs on the fire. bit smoky.
I reckon you can see that there's that crack is running down here, right? So that's going to take that side off. But I don't really need all that width anyway, right? So we just, this is all about accepting stuff, right? So what we're going to do, there's going to be a change in a minute. And the change is, is we're not going to hear that cluck cluck noise anymore. That noise. And again, there's another, you see the little radial, I'm trying to find it so you can see, different lights. I was going to go on during the day, but I thought it'd be more exciting to come on at night. You can see that these spirals radiate around like that. But something like this you could work with. And that might be the thing to work with. But what I've learned, What I've learned, right, is that when you only ever have perfect flint, you go in there and you think, right, okay, so this is how it's all got to be. But when things aren't so perfect and you've got cracks running around, I call it dancing between the cracks. We just accept it. Why shouldn't we accept it? You know, things don't have to be perfect. This 100 million years old, it can be whatever the hell it wants to be. And if it doesn't want to even become at all, at all, <laughs> I don't mind either. And that's that's flint napping for you. You know, it can be as random as that. Cheers. Uh, it's a funny thing doing a live movie and actually seeing your comments come up. It's um, an opportunity because some of you I know from other channels and some of you I don't know. But uh, let's just do a quick roundup. Let's just go cheers. We're getting into 2021 together. Here we go, guys, right? We're gonna start winning the day, you know? And um, seizing the moment. And bless your heart, cheers. That is what I like to see. Get in there. Let's have some power, some people power. Let's have some brother and sisterhood, right? Yeah, bless your hearts, nice one. Right, so we get into this rock again, shall we? And see if we see if it's got anything to offer, other than um, little tiny blade cores or something. <laughs> right, here we go then. Right, so back down here. Excuse the crutch shot. But here we go. It's the best place to flint nap. Right, I'm going down. I wait. Right. Let's just show you what I had before. I don't need that great big thing anymore. I can still see your comments. But it's also it's a little bit on the tricky side. Okay. Look at that one. There's not very much one can do about a situation when it's full of cracks. There we go. And that is... So the rock had a hell of a lot of cracks in it, right? But this one here, right? This bit here, I reckon the sound is about to start changing. So let's try that out. That's sharper now, right? It's a sharper sound. Look how black it is. How sweet and sharp the edges are. up again so this is what we've got to play with so I've got a bit of length on our hands right so just remember it's an opportunity just to hang out for a little while right hopefully I'll teach you one or two things as I go but um, and that's what I've come here for I've come here remember that uh, this is a live video so news people are coming in all the time so I have to recap I've come in here to say thank you to everyone for becoming subscribers because you're now a band a tribe strong of 50,000 people which in the great scheme of um, internet um, um, influencers 
particularly like my little boy watches um, YouTube all the time and a lot of the influencers on there are teaching him how to play games and they've got millions of subscribers. It's not about that. You guys are genuinely have genuinely been following me for this reason and not to learn how to build Lego or to play games. This is about other stuff. And I uh, just wanted to come here and be thankful and, uh, and, and also be sociable and um, let you know that as time goes forward, I'm hoping that I'll be presenting some, a lot more videos within, not about, it's not just about making videos for me anymore. It's about my journey and I'm on a journey. I bought that trike, Harley Davidson trike, and I've been traveling around Europe. I've been going out there and I've been living my dream and visiting wonderful archeological sites. I'm about to build a roundhouse on a nice little bit of site where I can run new courses from. And just, um, my dad is really well, thank you, Lost Tracks, he's doing great. He's in his 80s and he's still smashing flint like you wouldn't believe. Um, but um, life is good here and um, I'm pleased that you guys are on board and uh, gonna share that journey with me. And I am gonna take you around the world and I am going to go and visit all these wonderful places and I am going to try and bring them to life through recreating things of the past. So, and I love you. But don't people have funny names on Instagram? It's like Mabby178. <laughs> it's, <like, laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Because you can't always use your own name because the name's already taken. But hey, never mind that. Right, so let's get down and get on with this stone, right? We've been on here 27 minutes now, and I haven't really, all I've done is I've shaken this stone about, gabbed onto you lot, but I haven't really taught you anything. So obviously, this is the high spot on here, right? I say obviously, if you look at it, it's quite thick. And there's a nice little tilt down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give that a sharp little tap just there. And I've taken a proportion of it off, but there's more there to take. So we'll have a few of them and we might as well re-pick that flake up that'll be a nice little arrowhead flake so lots of this other stuff is reusable some of you know me well you know how uh, kind of crazy i am but it, hopefully in a good way um and some of you i don't know so well but it's little things like this that will help us get to know each other a little bit better. So, there's a good opportunity to teach you something, look. So, I've been taking these little flakes. I'm not crazy. I'm as daft as a brush, but I've been taking these flakes through here, right? And what's have been happening is they've been ending their journey there. Um, and flint napping is about being bold. Uh, you know, faint heart never won fair maiden kind of thing, right? And you're never gonna flint nap if you go at it with soft intention. So we're gonna get a big piece off of here right now, right? And um, to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to build a shape I have to remember I'm filming this so I might pull it out of camera shot and you can't see what the hell I'm on about. Right, what I need to do is here, I need to build a shape which instead of leaning at that angle, it needs to lean at that angle so I've got something to hit and get behind there. So we're going to give it a tap. But there's um, a term of phrase which all flint nappers hate and it's called end shock. And that's where you're hitting it on the end. You're hitting it on the end and it snaps in the middle. And that might be done because um, you don't hit it hard enough or with a full on good strong sort of intention. So I'll drop the camera back down again so you can see it. I'm looking at the quality of the hammer stone. Oi, that was a good one, right. So that's cleared that out. 
Can you imagine that, just as a tool all by itself, right? Hello, Marco, Marco from Tuscany. And hello to you all. It's quite a big deal to try and actually nap, stay focused, read all of the comments, and um, actually do an exercise like this at the same time. <laughs> ah, so I'm changing, look. So what I've done is I've just put this down. We have a tilt sitting here now. So we're going to turn that over. But I don't want to hit it too in invasively with that hammer stone, which would mean like hitting it up here somewhere or with still too much stone. So I'm going to hit it right on the edge. And to do that, we're going to use a soft hammer. Okay. See what I'm saying? You have to give it a little bit more of a clout. You have to let it, kind of let it know who's, who's here, who's in charge. We still need to get around the back here a little bit more. I did see someone just quote a uh, quote that you can see a hand axe, and that, in an experience, in, in a moment like this, would be the most sensible thing to make, because it's kind of like the easier thing to make. That was a good one. Look. Put that back. So that's shot down through there, right? I mean, these blades, these little blades here are awesome. So I'll tell you about that. And um, we'll just take a little bit of a detour from this, just for a second. So it's thinning out. You remember what we started with, right? We started with something very chunky like that. But this is off of here. It'll come out of there somewhere. About there. Oh, you can't see. <laughs> like that. So that's where we're going. And you have to remember also it's a celebration, so I'm having a drink. Cheers. Not cheers to me, cheers to you. Cheers to all of us. And here we go again. You can all slap that cheers button and go cheers. Cheers, everyone. Strong hearts to 2021 because we're going in it, right? And we're going to be survivors and we're going to take a strong heart in there, right? Like the cavemen did. They didn't just lay down and go, eh, I'm dead. It's like, no, it's a, it's a, big, it's a different deal. So bless you mm. and cheers. But I got into flint napping when I was, well, I'm 50 years old now. I'm... Um, Enjoying being 50 because I've been celebrating midlife crises. This is, I'm trying to pack as many as, in as I can throughout the whole year. <laughs> so we've got Harley Davidson trike. <laughs> we won't go on about all of them. Um, by at the tender age of five, I was um, lucky enough to be driven into the middle of a forest by my mum and dad to an ancient flint um, mine and I was told that that was where I was going to be living and growing up and there was a little house right in the middle of the forest and there was a wonderful site which is an ancient monument of over 400 Neolithic flint mines which are four and a half thousand years old and um, I spent the next 13 years living, running around, being a child in the wild if you like, it was great. Um, and this piece of stone has only come six miles away from that particular site itself. So as much as I've journeyed throughout the last 45 years, um, I don't live too far away from where I started because I love to be close to the stone. And um, throughout the period of when I was um, from five to like 17 when I left, it was a 13 year period, I learned a lot of skills. I learned a lot about flint napping, I learned a lot about hunting, and I learned a lot about tanning. And um, just generally, that was the first part of the journey. The second part of the journey came when I left, and I realised that Grimes Graves, which is the place I grew up, 
had got into me, it had got into my bones and my blood. And um, Stone Age people became like the supernova of like my life and a recognition that, um, you know, we can all live in a house, we can all go to a shop, but we can't always all go in the woods and provide for ourselves, particularly using what's already out there rather than taking things in. So one of the things I'm going to be doing in the new year, which is a little bit of a, a, a tough measure, just spending out down to pick my rock up, is I'm going to be running a new course called um, Naked Hands. And that course is where I'm going to take people into the landscape that where this rock comes from. But I'm not going to take anything in there to support the course. Basically, if, it, if nature can't give it to you, then you ain't getting it. Um, and then what we're doing is we're asking the really bold question is like, OK, so how do we fit in? Because everything else that's already there knows how to fit in. And we kind of tend to lose that skill set um, through um, all the barriers that we put up. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, bless your man hands. <laughs> Grab a grip on it. And the fingernails, remember? You've got to have fingernails. There you talk it. <laughs> So back to the rock for a minute or two, and thanks for asking. Hopefully that provided a little bit more insight as to um, who the hell I am. So what I'm doing now is we took a big strong flake off the back here, right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to convert the edge of this. We're going to start taking flakes off the other side. What that actually means is that we're thinning it out and we're getting a balance going on. And the, and the center of the tool stays the thickest part while um, we cast flakes off of either side. You have to be careful where you put that stone because you're about to go like that. So <laughs> it's better off if you put that on the floor down there. There you go. And each time you take a flake off with, with a success, you know, then the story changes. So instead of just whacking the hell, living hell out of it, what you've got to do is you've got to pay attention. Now I've got another stone now. This one's much more abrasive and um, it's got a few injuries on it. Oh, thank you, Brian. Happy New Year to you. So social media is a funny old thing. It's kind of given us connective tissue between each other. And it's had a massive impact on my life. And I never knew that that was going to be part of my story. But um, in fact, I remember going on Facebook about eight, eight or nine years ago. I'm thinking, this is a bloody dating site. I'm getting off of here. And, uh, and I did. And I thought I'd better give it another look. And I realised that my first observations weren't actually correct. And I soon began to make friends there. And, um, and I think it can be treated as a lovely thing. And I'm glad that I've chosen to um, continue with social media because I now find it a royal pleasure. And, um, you know, we always get a little bit of naff, but that's the world all over, right? But generally, it's good, and um, I appreciate you lot. Anyway, you can see that this is reasonable, right? But as we come up here, things lift up a little bit. And when you look through it, you know, you, this is the eye of the napper. You have to look all round. You have to keep looking all around. Now, it gets a little bit narrow in the middle, so that's a bit like a dog bone, right? That means that that could snap there very easily, and I have to pay attention to that. But when you look at it there, it's hard to see. If you was right with me, you'd see better. But you can see that this is a more narrow end. You can see this is sort of like got a swoop in here. What I could do with is changing the shape of this end here, Cast in some flakes up here, 
because essentially what I'm doing, it's not about making the tool yet, right? Oh, nice one, Callum. You certainly know it now, mate. It's about balancing this out. This has got to go, oh, 50 years young. Look at that. That's 50 years young, eh? <laughs> um, at any time, any hit that I place on this that's badly placed can end up going, <laughs> what did Richard, Rich and Donick, no comment. All right, cheers to my good looks. I'm waiting. <laughs> hey, nice one, Dixon. Right. So we've got a... <laughs> Bless your hearts. Got to keep it interesting, haven't we? Any single hit that I put on here, right, that's placed wrong or that lacks confidence or is slightly at the wrong angle, boom, game over, straight away. That's the game of chess. At least when you play chess, right, you can see the queen coming, right? You can see... <laughs> The, you can see the impending doom, right? Well, it's not like that with Flint Nap, and you think it's all going well. One whack, bang, dang, that's it. Checkmate. Bang. Out of. <laughs> <laughs> Loving them comments, thank you. But let's get off with the looks now. <laughs> we'll go back to this bit of rock for a second. We're 42 minutes in. We're going to keep this running for a complete hour, right? Can you, I don't know, let me just drop that down there a little bit more. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing some soft shape work, right? Can you hear the sounds? Do you hear the sound when it went, boop, went up sharply? That says, that says to me that what I'm doing is I'm sending the sound directly to the far end. And if I'm not careful, that's going to bounce back and snap it in the middle because that's how end shock works. So what we want is we want a sound which doesn't quite hit that. That's better. So technically that last sound that you heard represented a flake which was detached and didn't run into any struggles along its way. Um, as opposed to something which is bouncing off of the far end. You listen to it, you can hear it's got a song and you have to play with the song. You know, all these little things like that, stuff like that, that potentially could be a um, little instant shot arrowhead. So what you get is you get loads of different tools along the way, and then there's all the different holds that you actually hold, use when you're holding the flint. So look, you know, kind of two for one. <laughs> you just made me laugh, the last person. You, 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 your um, comments disappear, um, disappear sometimes before I've even had the time to read them. Look at that. Right, this is a beautiful, interesting little moment, right? So I've just hit this at this end, right? And, um, oh, Happy New Year, Gareth. I've hit that at that end, but because there was a crest running along here, this flake is just running along at a crest like that. Although it's come to that point, and if you looked at it, it dropped down here, then it began to rise again, and it couldn't allow itself to go back up the rise. That's the very nature of the way the flint swims, look. Oh, get it back in the view. All said and done, nice blade. <laughs> and at some point in time now, when we look at that, I'm going to have to come after this. Oh, Andreas, do you know what, guys? So I don't have any control over um, what 
who's here tonight. I don't even know if everyone here is subscribers or not, but um, I appreciate point. I appreciate that point because likes are good for me, right? And um, and comments are good for me. I do try to get comment back to comments, but I'm a bit poor on this particular channel. But also subscriptions and ah, oh, Alex, nice one, mate. I'm glad to have you on board. So put the word out get my you know if you want to bring me more people on board then I'd love that it's all good for me um, get the following get the news out there get the word out there you know but also I've been having discussions about numbers aren't really important what's important is interaction right so when you guys choose to interact and I get the opportunity I can interact back and um, slowly we get to know each other and there's certain people that actually know me really really well now and become lifelong friends and that's the thing that we should be going for don't you think you know imagine having caveman as a friend <laughs> right so back to the rock i'm going after this little lump here now so because it's further over this side of the stone what i'm going to do Having a caveman as a friend, that's almost like a threat. It's like, I don't want a caveman as a friend. I want normal people. <laughs> right, so we turn it over. That was an abrasion. Um, an abrasion is where you rub the edge gently like that. And then we turn it over, right? and we're ready to whack. That bothers me, but I've got to whack it anyway. Right, so sod it. We'll whack it, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually whack, whack it, right? That was a whack. And we crossed over, and that worked nicely, you know. I'd like to get to him, but I'll take this one first. This is why it's so difficult, you know, when you're filming yourself sometimes, to keep it all on target. Um, it's kind of done on a budget, isn't it? But um, hey, we're here. We kind of got something going on, I think, don't you? First shot caused a problem, but it's all right, you know. Problems come and go as you're napping. You just have to hopefully be able to score a recovery from it. One little thing like that, that might actually cause the whole uh, downfall of it. But um, at the moment, we're all right. So you could ask yourself again, because somebody asked me earlier, my head's down at the moment, so sorry if I missed your comments, but somebody asked me earlier, what are we making? Well at the moment, we could call this a dagger, and a full tang dagger, so the actual, there's enough room here to put your hand around there and make a dagger there, we're certainly not going to get it within the hour, but this is more about a celebration today. A celebration of reaching 50,000 subscribers and finally deciding to come in here and be sociable. Because I've got loads of videos out there telling you how to make a dagger and stuff like that. And you can see we're not shy of the fact that this is not a complex craft, and the fact is, it's a craft that's been practiced for um, over three and a half million years. But the point being, that this really, 
we don't have a right to decide what we're making at the moment. What we have a right to do is stay in touch with the whole idea that we're, at, we're trying to balance and get control of a random shape. Once we get control of the random shape, then we can progress further. Well, that one. That was nice, wasn't it? You stop in there, right? And as you can see, oh, that was sexy, right? That little point there, I'd like to get across that, but then what we've got to do is we've got to turn that like that so we can sort of see. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to make their ends heavier than the middle, because that would accentuate a problem. And then you've also got to remember that there's two sides. Right, so this side, we've got a big heavy crest that's running down here. So I'm actually going to, I feel that like I want to build a platform here and take something along there. And then doing something along here, right, I might actually be able to connect up with the problem that I caught earlier, right? And if that flake transmitted its all way all the way down to there, look, that could actually undo the problem that I caused a little while ago. So that's what we're going after next. Did you hear that? Where it went, that, you know, a high knock. Which basically said, be careful, otherwise you'll snap it in off. There's lots of little angle adjustments as well. Not bad. That's a new platform. Cool. Okay, so we never got to that, but I'm still happy with the fact that them um, flakes went out successfully because. We're, we're trying to lose the weight off the ends more than anything else. And then what we do is pick on the middle. It's got a good old thwack sound, doesn't it? Little hinge in there. So. In the main, not everyone was here right at the start, um, but in the main, we started off with something that was pretty um, uh, random. And what we found is lots of chunks were coming off like this because of uh, glacial cracks. When we say glacial cracks, thermal cracks caused by the ice age, right? And, um, <laughs> Normal people are boring. <laughs> and we're roughing it down, and we have a fairly reasonable chance now, if I was to behave myself and get everything right, that we could potentially pull a dagger out of this. And um, I'm going to pop that down to one side now, because... What you've seen is you've seen me rough out and gain control of a piece of stone. I don't have time to make the full dagger, as you can imagine. There can be many hours, many, many hours, like right at the end of it. I end up doing pressure flaking into the platforms and um, we drop down to a new size soft hammer, which would be from that to that. And I just want to take a second to... Uh, have a quick keep keep my eyes where your comments are going, and um, yeah, happy happy New Year, absolutely happy New Year, guys. It's nice, isn't it? We are here. Um, I got I set up a little bit of a shelter here. Look, 
Um, got a few things knocking about in here. Just to sort of like give you an environment which was interesting. Imagine me sitting in my front room doing this. Well, soon, as we said, it's going to be um, it's going to be a new roundhouse. Yeah. Well, I don't play any music very well, but and that's not very Stone Age. I have got a bone one in there, but this has got a nice sound. Um, well, the reason I got that is because, I might as well tell you, right, I was walking through the woods, I was going to find my dad at a quarry, where um, most of the quarry um, had been converted into a lake, and he had to go into the woods, and it was a misty morning, and as I was going down through the forest in the mist, there was this beautiful, beautiful soft wooden tones coming through the forest and it was just glorious. And I thought, you know, if there was ever a musical instrument I'd like to be able to have with me, it's that. And uh, so there's been many times I've sat in amazing places on the edges of caves high up in the mountainside and uh, that's been company, you know, so you sit there and listening to the birds, um, watching nature, breathing, thinking, smelling and listening. And you feel the inspiration to have a little blast and try and complement everything that's out there. And I found that that's just a piece of kit to do it with. Um, it sort of resonates with me, that. Um, I think this is needs some maintenance. <laughs> the lights have got an hour charge on them. Yeah, basically, you see how the end of that is sort of gone in a bit. It needs to be reset, and it's set in there with pine pitch. So I need to adjust it out. Um, but that's a deer's leg bone, and that works really nice. So listen guys, we're 58 minutes and 22 seconds in and um, I've really enjoyed spending the time with you and uh, I wish you a happy new year and um, I hope hopefully you'll enjoy my new videos and please keep commenting, I appreciate you commenting and um, you know, hopefully I'll get to know some of you that I don't know better and um, the ones that I do know uh, it's all right spike man it's like another time but when I end the video what I can do I'm looking at it right now I've got a cross up in the right hand corner I'm not really sure what that's for but I visualize I'm going to press that and then it gives me an opportunity to save so if you didn't join the video at the start and you want to watch the beginning if I can save it then um, you'll have the opportunity to go back and recap so thanks see you all soon